नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स दिस इज द फिफ्थ लेक्चर इन द सीरीज ऑन इंजीनियरिंग साइकोलॉजी इन द लास्ट टू लेक्चर्स वी डिस्कस द रिसर्च मेथड्स इन इंजीनियरिंग साइकोलॉजी एंड प्रीवियस टू दैट वी डिस्कस्ड द इंट्रोडक्शन टू इंजीनियरिंग साइकोलॉजी द प्रजेंट लेक्चर एंड द वन विच फॉलो विल डिस्कस अबाउट डिस्प्लेज displays are primary to displaying information to operators and this information is really critical because on the basis of these displays the operator decides further course of action displays come in a number of shapes and sizes and a variety of forms in the present lecture and the one which will follow will discuss visual displays and some form of olfactory displays now what is a display you have often seen digital watches the interface of a digital watch or analog watch shows you time this interface which shows you time or if it is a smart watch it shows you other kind of information related to your workouts or other parameters like heart rate this interface is called a display now in the mo uh, modern machine world a machine cannot be imagined without a display and displays are very critical if you look around you you will find a number of displays whether it is the printer that you are looking which has a small display that tells you about when it is out of paper what is the task it is performing and other system related information or it could be the computer screen which tells you a number of things which helps you in providing further inputs to this computer this place could be as simple as the one on your baking machine or it could be as complex as the displays which you see on power stations or on uh, rocket propulsion systems all in all display is a friend of the operator because it provides a lot of information to the operator so in the present lecture we'll discuss what is a display the nature of a display types of display various methods of improving the efficiency of a display and further to it we will look at various types of displays so let's start this lecture now you might have come across people who are color blind so to say color blind is a particular kind of deficiency in the retina of the eye where people are not able to see colors particularly the ishihara test is used for detection of the green red color blindness or some other color blindness which could be the yellow uh, and the other color for which people are blind color blindness is a major problem because people who are color blind will not be able to perceive and distinguish between the green and red color and because of this they will be not able to read information from colored displays and this could be a problem imagine someone who is having color blindness and he is driving on the intersection you see traffic lights which are green red 
and yellow. Now, somebody who is color blind, it becomes very difficult for him to distinguish between when the red light is off and the green light is on and so he uses some other subtle cues from the environment like the car passing by or the honk of the car behind you to make meaning of when the lights have changed. So, is it the problem with humans? As I explained to you earlier also, engineering psychology is about understanding the limitations and capabilities of humans and then modifying systems in such a way that with these limitations and capacities, humans can interact with machines in a better way, so that performance can be increased. The topic of this section will be focusing on how to improve display, so that it can help not only normal people, but people who cannot process displays or have some kind of a deficiency in processing displays, so that they can perform better and they can quickly and accurately understanding the meaning of a display. So, let us start with first understanding what displays are. A display is something which conveys information efficiently and accurately with support behavioral goals. As we just looked at the display on the microwave oven. Now, it will tell you certain information for example, how long a process is running, what process is running, for example, whether I am using the microwave feature or the convection feature, whereas the microwave feature will help you in heating certain foods, the convection feature is for baking basic. In the microwave feature, you cannot put metals, whereas in the convection feature, you can put metals. Other information like when a process is starting, how much time is left, when a process is ended are all information which is displayed by this small display at the top of a microwave oven. What is the need of this information? This information helps you in setting further behavioral goals. By looking at how much time is left to cook a particular food, you can decide whether you can spend the time which is left in reading something or watching a television series or doing some other work. So, your behavioral goals are complemented by information which is presented by displays. Most displays are central as they are the primary means of providing information. Any information that we get either from another person or from the environment happens through a display. It could be the analog display or it could be a digital display. This place could be as complex as a very tight collection of interface with a number of dials or it could be a simple display like the raising of fingers to tell you how many objects are there in the environment. So, displays are an important part of conveying information. They are the ones which help us in acquiring information because at the best a display can represent an information, but the meaning of the information is to be decoded by the user and if the correct information is not interpreted and presented by the display correctly, the user may interpret the information on the display in the wrong way and this could cause problems. A number of times accidents happen because people misread 
the display and make anomaly in further course of action. So, not only designing a display is important in terms of providing better methods of information, but also information in the correct way. And this section that we are presently dealing with will tell you a lot about how to achieve these goals. The information contained within a display could be of two types. Generally speaking, the information could be about a system's current state. This could be the end sign on a microwave, the stop sign that you see when you are driving somewhere or walking somewhere or that particular cross that you see on the printer interface which tells you that you have a paper jam. So, all these information are system related information and they are presented very well through a display. The other kind of information which displays can handle is regarding the effect of user's input. I press a button on an interface and with this press of a button some action is initiated. This kind of information which is provided by the display to the user to prompt further action is also an inherent part of a display. You often seen when you get a new cell phone, you ask to press somewhere, input certain things and based on that further information is provided by the operating system. So, while setting up a new phone, once you tell it the language that you want to set it in, it will further prompt you to put your uh, account information, certain passwords, the network to connect to and each step that you do, it will give you an input saying whether the previous step was correct and how should you proceed from here. So, this is another kind of information which displays can handle and this promotes further correct action on the end of the user. So, all in all displays are ways of presenting information accurately and the type of information could be feedback or it could be system state. Now, there are a number of displays and as I discussed before, we will look at a couple of display types in this section. We will look at the visual, tactile and olfactory display in this and the next lecture whereas the auditory display will be dealt with in further lectures. So, let us start looking at what are visual displays. Presenting information can happen in a number of modalities. You can hear the jingle or the warning sign on the car beeping system, you are familiar with this scene where if you do not put your belt on, the car will provide you with a beep. This is an alert message to say that your seat belt is not properly put on and this is a warning system. This kind of display is an all effect this kind of display is an auditory display and this is something which we will deal in further lessons. Other kind of displays could be the tactile display, the phone vibrations which tell you about the incoming information or incoming call is a tactile display whereas, certain kind of smells which tell you about certain system parameters are olfactory displays. The pungent smell that you get from the cooking gas which tells you that gas is leaking, this kind of display about the system state is a olfactory display. 
visual displays we have discussed. So, let us start elaborating on visual displays. Now, there are two types of visual displays. We have something called the static display and we have something called a dynamic display. So, what are static displays? Static displays are those displays which do not change. So, display itself is static, but the information it provi uh, provides to you is also limited. By the nature that it is being fixed, it provides you limited information. What could be the examples of such kind of display? You would have seen stop signs and go signs on roads. Road signs will tell you when an elevation is coming, when to stop, where is the zebra crossing or other road related conditions are a form of static displays. Caution labels or warning signs that you see around you in the environment are also static displays. Signs which tell you not to enter somewhere or which tells you not to touch certain things. You have seen the microwave oven and on top of it there is a display which says that the oven itself is very hot and you should avoid touching it by bare hand when it is functional. This is a example of static display. Static displays could also be things like building name. So, where is the administrative building in a certain university or where is the university, where is the town hall or other places. These kind of displays are also static displays. As against these displays are the dynamic displays. Now, whereas the static displays are static and convey limited information, the dynamic displays are the one which represent information which changes over a period of time. So, stop signs and labels are static displays, but digital clocks or temperature meters are dynamic displays. Dynamic displays tend to represent the state of a system over a period of time or real time feedback as to what the system is doing with a certain input from the side of the user are dynamic displays. Good examples of dynamic displays are the signal strength on your Wi-Fi. So, you have your laptops or cell phones and there is this Wi-Fi signal which tells you what is the strength. 2 bars is low strength, 4 bars is high strength and so this is and it keeps on changing as you move around the signal tower of a cell phone. Now, this increasing and decreasing signal strength is a form of dynamic display. You would have also seen progress bars when you copy files from one computer to another or from a computer to your pen drive, a progress bar comes in which tells you how much of the job is complete and what time is left and you see this bar increasing as more and more files are being transferred. This is a good example of a dynamic display. Another dynamic display which we are familiar with is the speedometer which is either on your car or on your two wheeler and this speedometer tells you about what speed you are presently cruising at and not only what speed you are cruising, it also tells you what kind of actions to take at that speed. If you are at very low speed, you should be at a very low gear. If you are at a very high speed, high gears can be applied. So, this kind of information or change in system state are represented by dynamic displays. Now, there are certain rules of effectiveness 
which can be used for improving the static displays and I will name three or four rules here. The first rule which improves the effectiveness of static displays deals with conspicuity. What does conspicuity means? It translates to how well a sign attracts attention. Now, static displays are static by nature, they are fixed and something which is fixed loses the property of capturing attention. Things which are moving can capture attention, but things which are fixed loses this property. So, static displays should be made in such a way that it should captures people attention. The very idea of a display is to provide you some kind of information, whether it is a warning, alert or some other information. But imagine a situation when people do not look at a display, just because it becomes so much mixed with the environment that people are not able to notice it. In those cases, those important informations will be missed out. A number of times it would have happened that you would have not marked the display of men versus women washrooms and mistakenly you would have entered the wrong washroom. This is because the display was not made in such a way that it captured your attention or it was placed somewhere which it did not help in capturing your attention. So, one of the ways in improving display statically information is by improving the conspicuity which is how to attract attention. How can this be achieved? We can use colors. Colors attract people and it makes people gaze on them and this property of color can be used for catching people attention. Also moving lights or marquee lights as it is called can capture people attention. A number of times you would have seen lights which are so timed that it gives you virtual motion. In festivals you have seen these lights which display certain forms or certain words. These immediately capture attention. The lights actually do not move, but they create relative motion or false motion and this is one way of attracting attention. Another thing that can be used to improve static displays could be the use of brightness. More brighter a signal would display higher levels of warnings, lower brightness would display lower levels of warnings. Similarly, blinking lights could display certain warning levels. The more th strongly it blinks, the more level of warning could be. So, this kind of features can be used to display some information to the operator. Another feature which can be dealt with in terms of improving the effectiveness of static displays is the visibility. If a sign is present, but it is not visible, you cannot see the sign. It could be placed somewhere that people's eyes or gaze do not fall on the sign. It should be, it is made in such a way that it blends with the environment. The design of the display is such that it blends with the color of the door and so it is not visible. In those cases also, people will misread a display and so one improvement can be done is in terms of improving the visibility of a display. Certain variables which can improve the visibility of a display could be in terms of the size. What should be the size? The size of the display should be such 
that it should be big enough and not only that it should be placed in such a way that the distance of this display from the viewer should be such that the angle that this display suggests the angle that the display projects on the retina of the eye is between 0 0.8 degree of arc. We will discuss this visual angle a little bit later, but it should be such that the size of the display should the image of the size of the display should fall on the center of the retina and so people are able to see it. Now, the retina has a number of places there are the periphery where if you project something people will take a lot of time to perceive it, but the center of the retina which is called the fovea if something is projected onto that area it is easily visible. So, most displays should be made in such a way and placed in such a manner that the angle that it subtends onto the retina of the eye falls on the fovea itself. Also critical information to be placed near where the user's gaze be detected. Another important thing that designers should be thinking about is where does the gaze of the user or the operator actually falls. And by looking at all gaze directions and that zone where most people's gaze fall that is where the display should be placed. Now, if you are aware of the eye tracking experiments, eye tracking is a method of looking at where people's gaze generally falls and this differs from one stimuli to another. So, when placing a display somewhere, this kind of experimental study should be done to look at where most people are looking and if you can find that hot zone where most people's gaze fall this is where the display should be put because then the chances of being detect it detected increases many folds. Other things which can improve the effectiveness of displays are legibility. Legibility is the ability to distinguish letters, numbers and symbols from each other. Think about those times when you need to type your passwords. You would have come across those hard times when the O appears like 0, the 1 appears like L and other numbers and letters. Now, no matter how hard we try, it becomes really difficult at times to put in the correct letter or to read the correct information in terms of the letter which is being presented to us or the number which is pre being presented to us. While designing the static displays, legibility which is distinguishing between these features of letters and numbers should be thought about and display should be made in such a way that these kind of confusions do not arise. Also letters and numbers should not be put together or letters or numbers should not be clubbed together in such a way that there are no spaces between words. If you do that, what would happen is people would not be able to read perfectly and because of that the wrong information would be transferred. So, proper spacing and proper for font for displaying the letter should be used. Some factors which affect this legibility is to deal with something called visual equity. Visual equity is that feature which helps you in seeing clarity which gets translated in terms of how accurately or to what accuracy can you distinguish two objects. Equity is 
with what certainty can you distinguish two different objects or form of two different objects. So, this visual equity is another variable which helps in designing the legitimacy of symbols. Individual characters should also be shaped in such a way that they get distinguished from each other and this shaping of characters actually helps in the readability and the legitimacy of a warning sign or a static display. Now, a display could be visible, it could be legible, but it can be possible that it is not readable. So, you would have characters, it is it could be placed in the right place, but it would make no meaning as such. And so, not only display should be visible and legible as in you could identify what is being written and you could look at it, but a display could be made in such a way that it makes no meaning, it is unreadable and these can happen when too many words are put together, too much letters are strung in one sentence or sentences are written in such a way that it makes loose meaning. So, static display should also be made in such a way that improves readability. So, readability basically is how text qualities affect static displays and some features to be thought of for improving the readability is space between characters. What amount of space should be given between characters? If each character is close together, it will make a hodgepodge of itself and so you will not be able to distinguish them together. Lines of text. If two lines of text are close together, they will overlap each other and you will not be able to distinguish them. And line length, if the length of a line is too big, if you use complex sentences which has too many ideas built into it, it will become difficult to, for people to read and extract meaning. Remember displays give you important information and so if too much information is given, the very idea behind a display which is to provide important information in less time gets lost. So, this line length should be minimum. Font size is another thing. Lower fonts and upper fonts have their own magic. Lower fonts work in certain kind of situations whereas, more complex fonts tend to work in other certain other situations. Case of the character, it has been found experimentally that if a sentence is written all in upper case, it makes reading difficult. So, use of upper cases throughout is not beneficial in displaying warning signs. But if an immediate warning has to be given where people have to put their attention so that they can read it better, then all upper cases can be used. Reading experiences, people who are experienced readers, for them sometimes they use heuristic methods of reading and so display should be made in such a way that it makes people read rather than guess. Now, the more uh, knowledge you gather, the more reading experience you have, you start guessing and so that should be avoided. Display should be made in such a way that it should give you this feeling that you read the sentence for understanding the meaning and then you get engaged with it and you can extract meaning. So, that the reading of the display does not become automatic. Symbols are another form of display. What are symbols? These are pictorial figures that are used to represent information. There could be a symbol which displays that a particular washroom is for people with special abilities or it could be uh, symbols which tell you to go somewhere for certain actions as in when you are in an immigration line, the symbol can tell you where is the immigration in an airport it will tell you where is the domestic counter and where is the international counter or 
very simply symbols will tell you which country a particular currency is coming from. So, symbols are important and these are pictorial displays and this provides you information. Now, there are certain features of the symbol which we will discuss. One, they depict a concrete object or action. Most symbols in, in themselves, they, de uh, they depict a concrete object. The rupee symbol displays the concrete object that this is a currency note of Bharat or the symbol of a male figure on a washroom displays that this is to be used by the male gender. Symbols also display certain actions. For example, the symbol alert with a exclamation mark tells you to become alert that something is, hap something is happening. So, certain kind of actions or symbols which tell you proceed now, which basically is translated in terms of going on with an action, completing an action. So, when you scan your boarding pass on those automatic detection machines, when it says proceed, it is asking you to move ahead and so it displays an action. So, this is another kind of symbols. Now, symbols have some advantages and disadvantages. First, we will discuss the advantage. One major advantage of a symbol is that they do not need to be translated. Most symbols are universally accepted and they do not need to be translated. For example, look at the battery symbol. Everybody agrees that this is represents battery in a car or the symbol for weight, the symbol for cross or certain other kind of symbols, they have universality of meaning and they do not need to be translated back or thought back. And so, people agree on them and because of that, it makes easy for people to interpret them because most people around the world agree on them. But there are certain disadvantages of symbol too. And what are this? First, people may not be able to identify symbols. Sometimes it happens that you are not able to identify what the symbol actually tells you. So, you have a symbol which shows an animal and on top of it, you have a circle and a cross on it. And assuming that you are driving through a wildlife region. Now, this symbol which displays an animal is for animal crossing, but putting a circle on it and cross on it can be misinterpreted as in kill that animal. Technically, what it should say is that this particular animal is crossing and so beware and stop before crossing a certain region in this wildlife forest. But the way it is presented can be confused because a circle is made on the animal which means that it highlights the animal and the cross says that cut it out and so can be misinterpreted. So, while designing symbols this kind of problems can arise as in people are not identify what the symbol actually means or what the symbol is all about. Also, people may not be able to identify the referent word object or place. What is it referring to? Not only that symbols cannot be misread, it could also be the problem that they people would not be able to clearly predict as in what is the symbol actually referring to, where is it referring to. Right? So, a uh, warning sign telling you not to cross the security check on an airport. Now, think about a symbol which is designed in all yellow and uh, three cross on it or a skull and a cross on it and this displays that do not cross. Now, if you display stop, it will tell the person who is to cross this security gateway to stop before the yellow line. 
but instead of writing stop or a red light if you display this stop sign using a skull and two bones crisscrossing people will not be able to understand what is this symbol actually telling you because this kind of skull and two uh, bones display high amounts of alert all you have to do is to put a symbol saying that when the red light comes in then stop before the yellow line when the green light is there you are clear to pass it and go for security check in a airport but if you put in the wrong symbol then people would not be able to refer back to what it is actually related to and how it should be interpreted so the use of symbol although improves people's information processing but on the other hand if it is misread it can create grave problems now while designing static symbols and with the coming of the modern day one important thing that has changed is text earlier text was written in books and printed magazines or in a printed form and reading it from a magazine or a printed form it was easier but text or written words has undergone a phase shift from the books it has come to the computers and now most text are visible in the form of electronic web pages you would have seen yourself that reading from a web page or a pdf document becomes really difficult and at times can create physiological problems like headaches as compared to when reading from a book but with the changing of society and the changing of the whole digital world coming in this display of text has also undergone a paradigm shift so with the usage of computers the display of text poses a challenge one major thing is that reading from the screen itself is difficult and one probable reason is that the refresh rates of screens vary no screen has the same refresh rate or it doesn't refresh at the same rates as compared to books which don't have refresh rates which don't change in terms of their brightness or in terms of their intensities and so reading a book is easy but screens are lit by certain pixels and they keep on changing the brightness although very minimally but they screens keep on refreshing and that creates a problem but one major problem with most text on uh, displays digital displays could be because of screen sizes web pages are av available everywhere you can view it on tvs which are very huge you can visit these web pages on a computer screen could which could be 14 inches and then on small held held devices like your mobile phone and now even smart watches so making text readable on smart watches as well as on the tv screen is a difficult job how to manage that is another problem because we just discussed that if you lower the font size or lower the text format readability becomes difficult so there is a number of proposals that we could follow which can improve the readability of the text not only on bigger screens but also smaller screens and it could be made in such a way that it could handle all the screens or most of the screens so what variables we should consider one visual angle visual angle relates to the size of an alpha numeric character which are specified by angles subtended by the stimulus on the retina and not on the characters display width now any alpha numeric character the readability of it doesn't vary in terms of its physical writing width versus height but rather it is most affected by the angle that this particular character subtends on the retina of the eye and this particular 
angle is called the visual angle. Designer should use the best visual angle so that people can read text in the most efficient way with the least stress and that is why a number of uh, research is going on in designing displays that can help you in reading efficiently. Now, visual angle in terms of minutes can be thought of and calculated in terms of this equation that I have here. So, 3 4 3 8 multiplied by h divided by d where h is the height of any stimulus. So, if I am looking at written words what is the height of these words and d is the distance in terms of the same unit in which the height is being measured. So, how far is the text from you? How big is the text from you? These two multiplied by the number 3438 will give you the visual angle. For your knowledge, how is visual angle calculated? Now, a circle has a 360 degree and 1 degree of arc is about 60 minute of arc. So, the 360 degree of a circle can be broken down into 1 degree each and each degree that I am talking about comprised of 60 minutes of an arc. For a demonstration purpose, a full moon displays a 0 0.5 degree or 30 minutes of an arc. Now, for design purpose, a good vision person can discriminate details in stimulus subtending visual angle of 0 0.8 minutes of arc. So, this kind of standard can be used so that the correct angle can be found out and that can be used for displaying text so that it could be read with least stress and most efficiency. The readability of a text also depends on something called the contrast. What is contrast? The visibility of static alpha, alphanumeric characters depends on the luminescence contrast or the foreground related to the background. Now, with written text, these kind of problems would not arise because the foreground and backgrounds are both not lit and uh, the luminescence is discussed only in terms of the light falling from an external sources. But for those sources which have a light of their own and display text, contrast plays a big role and this contrast actually determines whether we can read the text. If the contrast is very high, people will not be able to decipher text and if it is very low, still people will not be able to decipher text. So, a minimum value of contrast which is how bright the foreground and background is will decide a proper readability of text. Now, black characters on uh, the textbooks are visible because they reflect less light than white background. Black absorbs light and so it is more brighter, it, it absorbs more light and so it, uh, it, it, it appears to ir, uh, kind of not stand out and white on the other hand reflects most light and this contrast helps you in reading textbook. But the same thing cannot happen in designing of electronic displays and there we need to use this uh, feature of having the appropriate contrast. Now, luminous contrast can be measured in terms of the maximum luminous minus the minimum luminous divided by the maximum luminous and this will give you the contrast, uh, the luminous contrast and the contrast ratio is the maximum luminous on the minimum luminous which is the maximum luminous of the foreground and the minimum luminous is of the background on that kind of information. Contrast can vary in terms of critical information. When critical information is used, the foreground should be more brighter than the background, the contrast should be very high. So, that 
the information which is critical should be highlighted. View distance, if there is a large distance for viewing, the contrast should be arranged in such a way that the foreground projects stands out of the background. Ambient light with the external light varying, the contrast should be maintained using these parameters so that people are able to decipher the foreground or the message from the background and viewers age. Old age people take some time in deciphering letters and so contrast should be made in such a way that it should fall in that region of visibility that both old age and young age people are able to read. Another feature which dictates readability of text has to do with something called stroke width. What is stroke width? Stroke width depends on the font chosen to render the characters which is the width to height ratio. How much big a character is and what format it is written? What is the stroke which is used to write it? That is related to the readability of that character or that word. Some parameters here is for black on white display a 1 is to 6 to 1 is to 8 stroke width is to be used and for white to black display a 1 is to 8 to 1 is to 10 ratio should be used in terms of the stroke width. Now the greater the stroke width for white letters on dark background seeks to minimize the effects of irradiation where light reflecting off the white areas of the letter appear to bleed into the darker regions of the characters blurring the appearance of the letters and reducing legibility. Similarly, the characters with a narrow stroke may be less legible when depicted against a high reflective background due to the effect of irradiation. So, minimizing of this irradiation and using the right stroke width will actually help us in improving the readability of text. Another important feature of digital text is to do with fonts. Now, there are various fonts that we use. We use sans serif, serif, Vardana or uh, Times New Roman, Arial, Calvary, so many fonts are there. The use of these fonts also dictate the readability. If you use for example, the Gothic font, certain characters will not be able to stand out from the background and it will become difficult to read and that is why most websites have something called Vardana or it has some something called Arial as fonts because these are the easiest to be perceived. Now, the fonts used to render alphanumic characters belong to one of the two categories. So, there are two categories of fonts, one is called the serif and the other is called the shan serif. The word serif, it refers to the decorative features found around the end of the stroke of letter segments. When you look at fonts, computer fonts for that matter, you will or if you have seen calligraphy, the way these letters are written by calligraphers or the way the ending of letters are depicted by certain fonts like Vardana or Times New Roman, this helps in identifying letters, characters, alphabets and helps in reading. So, serif translates to these decorative formations which are towards the end of these characters. Serif fonts are widely used in printed material like books. So, if you are writing a book or if you are displaying a message on a book or a magazine or a newspaper, a serif font should be used. Sans serif fonts have found a wide use on web pages where the lower resolution of computer display screens make serif fonts more difficult to read. Because of the use of low resolution, the ending of letters starts to blur and because of that the sans serif fonts are used uh, which actually helps in displaying characters in a better way on low resolution screens and uh, the use of fonts can also help in readability of text. Now, up till now we have discussed static displays. Let us now discuss something called dynamic displays. So, what are dynamic displays? They are used to represent qualitative information concerning the variable values, the directions of rate of change and the confirm system parameters. 
static displays give you one information which is consistent and does not change. Dynamic displays on the other hand displays information with changes for example, the progress bar or the digital clock that you have this displays constant change in information or the tachometer or speedometer on your car this displays constant change in speed or constant change in engine rpm. So, when we are displaying variable values a digital display is much better directions or rate of change can be displayed more better in terms of uh, dynamic displays for example, think of a compass if you take the compass and move it very quickly it will tell you how you are changing in comparison to the earth's north because compass are uh, most compass are linked to the earth's north. So, it will tell you your position in relation to the earth's north and the movement that you are doing the rotation that you are doing changes the direction. So, it will tell you that and certain dynamic displays also confirm system parameters as we discussed the microwave oven the timing or the change from one mode to another tells you how this oven is shifting between different cooking procedures. Most dynamic displays they display change of information which is either constant or periodically. When you are cooking a food over a period of time in one mode it is dynamic uh, it is a constant change whereas, periodic changes where you look at progress bars or Wi Fi signals where these signals tend to keep on vary with within the dynamic and uh, the static displays you also have something called analog and digital displays. So, analog scales are those scales which are static numbers written and they are not digital in any form digital displays on the other use uh, other hand use digital uh, medium of putting information. So, analog scales are named because the pointer position is analogous to the value it represents whereas, in this digital display the information completely changes the display completely changes to display the new information analog displays change represents this change in information using a fixed pointer. So, the pointer position in an analog display represents the change that is happening a good example is the bathroom scale. Now, if you use an analog scale and you stand on it two things can happen either the, the pointer which moves around a set of numbers scale and it will give you your weight or when you stand on it the pointer will be at the center and the scale rotates there is a circular scale which rotates. So, these are the two type of analog displays you could have a fixed pointer display or you could have a variable pointer display. So, there is there is something called a fixed scale or there is something called a fixed pointer a fixed scale is where the pointer moves think of fixed scale in terms of the car speedometer or tachometer where the pointer is fixed the speed 0 20 40 60 80 is fixed and there is a pointer which uh, moves as you accelerate or decelerate. On the other hand a fixed pointer is the bathroom scale where you, where there is fixed position and the scale itself moves think of it in terms of also the compass what happens in a compass is the north is fixed and the circle rotates which tells you where you are. Now, analog scales could be linear scales circular scales or semicircular scales linear scales shows up and down movement for example, measuring weight on railway stations you have a scale which goes up and down and these are linear scales circular scales are scales like the compass and semicircular scales is like the car speedometer which is half a circle and within that half circle there are various speeds and the pointer keeps on moving. So, this is what an analog scale is. So, when should we use a digital uh, scale and a analog scale or a digital display and an analog display digital displays are good when the type of task the operator performs is digital in nature which requires exact values or numerical values power station workers they require exact values because these exact value tells them when to switch off a particular function and switch on a particular function if the value falls below a certain for example, the boiler heat if increases by certain amount they have to do a counter measure this requires exact values 
there are problems with these digital scales and what is that one problem is that numerical value changes rapidly so if we have a digital display which keeps on changing very quickly then values will also keep on changing very quickly and updating these values in working memory or in memory becomes really difficult and so keeping track of changes or trends become difficult so digital displays are good when you have a fixed cutoff saying that above this value or below this value you have to do certain actions or at this value you have to do certain actions but it doesn't give you a trend as to what has happened over a period of time this is the other disadvantage which i was discussing it will take a high amount of effort you have to write down each values to give the trend as in where the system started and where is it right now and how it has been progressing if you want that since the information is quickly modifying itself on the digital display understanding what has opened uh, happened over a period of time which is called the trend is difficult on the other hand we have analog displays they communicate spatial information they give you information related to space how space has changed around you trends and rate of change are very easy in this case because you will come to know where you are at this position and where you started speeds it will tell you where is 0 and where you are so 0 to 30 how you have move across 0 to 30 km per hour and it also tells you rate of change exact numerical values cannot be displayed through these trends this is the disadvantage analog uh, displays cannot give you exact numerical values it will give you numerical values which are rounded off it will give you cat uh, those numerical values which are close to the next digit Right, so it will give you some kind of a whole numerical value. A number of features to be considered here. First, the design of the pointer plays a lot of role in designing analog clocks and analog displays. Scale ranges. How far is the scale? Whereas in the car, you can see hundred kilometers. In some cars, you see three hundred kilometers. And when you the, in the same semicircle, you have to. Put 300 kilometers. The gap between 0 and 20 and 0 and 40 will be less, or you would have from from 0 to 40, 40 to 60. This kind of a division. Whereas smaller cars will have speeds between 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60 kind of a thing. And so scale ranges has another thing. Scale markings. Where is the marking done? You will see that advanced cars or and advanced speedometers will have in the initial movement. more scale markings than in the later movement there is a cut off and after that cut off the markings will be more wide apart so let's say 80 is the economy or 100 is the economy after 100 the markings will be more uh, taking more width so this is another problem uh, in in terms of analog scales the display location and arrangement is another feature about displays that we should discuss now there is a number of factors which influence selection of display location and arrangement where should your display be put this is decided in terms of the importance of fuse and the frequency of fuse how important a particular display is and how frequently a display is used decides where it should be placed the more important a display for example in terms of the car you have the speedometer and it is very important or uh, that feature of the car which tells you where it is in a off or on state or the gear position these are important things and should be put in front of you should not be put somewhere else on the other hand things like tachometer or when the light is off or uh, other things like uh, engine oil and some other things which are not necessarily something which you uh, want to rely on while driving should be put at the periphery or on the side wise but things like speed things like braking status things like uh, those which help you in driving or assist you in driving should be put in the center frequency of fuse speed is one thing which you frequently refer to because this decides how you are cruising and how your uh, action should be in terms of being caught on speed cameras or uh, for a proper driving and so the frequency of fuse of the speedometer suggests that it should be in the center of your visual field so these two factors suggest the importance of fuse and frequency of fuse suggest for the placement of displays in the center of the visual field two other properties that should be considered while locating a display and arranging a display is sequence of fuse now the physical arrangement of display should match as closely as reasonable the order in which they are monitored 
the way a display should be placed depends upon which feature you are using more and which features you are shifting between. What is the way in which you are shif shifting? For example, when you go into your car, the button which on the car is on the dashboard itself and, and it is colored. So, it, it is placed on the right hand side. Most people assuming that they are right hand side. So, that is what they uh, you on the car from and from there on the you look at the center of the display where you have the engine status and it gives you certain uh, parameters about the car. Then you put your car into drive and so you focus on the center of the uh, display where you will get to know the gear uh, position and then while you start driving the uh, speedometer comes to the center and that, that is what uh, takes the center of the display. Other things like engine and, and all are to be viewed only while starting the driving and so they could be on the side also on near the tachometer because you do not refer to it. So, the placement of uh, uh, these displays should be dependent totally on the sequence of use which displays are you going to use when. And then uh, there should also be something called a functional organization of display. The display should illustrate different but functionally related information should be grouped together. So, those uh, information which are functionally close together for example, di driving speed uh, and gear position should be placed in the same uh, semicircle, whereas vehicle related information should be pl placed on some other display. Things like uh, vehicle torque or vehicle speed or the uh, momentum of the vehicle, this should be placed together in uh, some other display because all these are related. Speed is related to the gear position, the gear position is related to the braking status and so these kind of information should be since they are functionally together, they should be placed in one display and so this kind of uh, arrangement of display should be also used. Lastly, we will look at the type of information that most displays uh, give you. Now, there are quantitative inf uh, displays, the quantitative in displays give you displays uh, relating to maps and graph forms. It gives you information in terms of values, quantitative values, increase and decrease in values or uh, if you want to display uh, the change in pattern or the change in price index. You can have this change in price index of particular country over a period of time as a graph and that will give you more information. Navigation displays and maps, another kind of displays are the displays which are help, uh, helpful in navigating and these displays can be put in terms of handheld maps, in terms of list of directions which happens in Google, so it tell you where to uh, go from where to uh, take the next left, take the next right left or and it is put all of these are put as instructions on the uh, side of this visual map and so this is also navigation display and the GPS is also a part kind of a uh, uh, navigation display. Now, these displays the type of information in displays are also influenced by the same features which static displays are uh, affected by for example, the legibility and clutter of items. So, labels and symbols have contrast and should be discriminable. So, all labels and uh, symbols should be put in such a way that they have good contrast and they should be discriminable from one another. We can use colors and these colors can act actually help us in displaying different type of information differently and level of de detail and map size could also be one of those features which has helped in categorizing information and displaying information more properly in a display. So, in today's class we looked at display, we looked at visual display and various kinds of display and those methods which should be used to make a display more effective. When we meet next, we will look at the visual system in the humans, look at its capabilities and some limitations and then we will look at two other kind of displays. So, thank you for being with me here today, Namaskar and goodbye from the MOOC studio. Thank you.